Phosphorus is an important macronutrient your soil and plants need to develop a strong root system and good bud development. Phosphorus is the P in the NPK, one of our vital plant nutrients. I'll be going over what phosphorus does for your garden, some sources of phosphorus, even some free ones, when and how to apply it, and at the end I'll be going over some symptoms that your plants show when your soil is lacking in phosphorus. Phosphorus plays a vital role in photosynthesis, converting the sun's energy into food. Phosphorus is responsible for strong stalks, stems, and a root system. The stronger the root system, the healthier the plant. The healthier the plant, the less it is susceptible to pests and diseases. Root crops especially need phosphorus to develop sizable tap roots, rhizomes, and tubers. Crops like potatoes, radishes, beets, and carrots won't develop well without phosphorus in the soil. Phosphorus helps plants take up nutrients, making your vegetables more nutrient dense and flavorful. It's also responsible for the bud, flower, and seed development. So you can see why it's important for anything that flowers, like tomatoes, peppers, squash, your bulbs, roses, and even fruit trees. The plant roots can't uptake phosphorus until the soil microbes break it down, and this can take a little time. This is why I like to apply my phosphorus about two to three weeks before planting. This is especially important for fast growing crops like radishes. If I would apply my phosphorus to the soil at the same time that I sow my radish seeds, and radishes only take three to four weeks to develop, then that phosphorus won't be available for those plants to uptake and most root crops start to develop their size underground within the first couple of weeks. So the best time to be applying your phosphorus to your soil is about two to three weeks before planting. For fruit trees, phosphorus should be applied when the buds are starting to swell. That can be late winter to early spring. In our zone A, it can be as early as mid-February. Let's go over some phosphorus sources. Soft rock phosphate is a mineralized source of phosphorus. It's long lasting and it also helps improve drainage in soil. There's also a hard rock phosphate. And this is one that I don't use because it literally takes years for it to break down and be usable by plants. So I just prefer to use the soft rock phosphate. Putting soft rock phosphate in your compost while you're building it will help it to break down. So then when you apply your compost, it's readily available for those plants to uptake those nutrients. As I'm building my compost heap and layering it, I'll sprinkle in the rock phosphate over it, mix it in, and I usually use about five pounds for a three by three by three heap of raw material. While finished compost does contain small amounts of phosphorus, you can definitely increase the amount of phosphorus by doing this. And this is especially good for soils that are depleted. Plants have a hard time taking up phosphorus in soils that have a high pH. The best range is between a 6 and a 6.5, which is kind of hard for areas like ours that's usually about a 7 or higher. So that's why it's really a good idea to put your phosphorus into your compost pile. Not only does the compost help balance out that pH, but it's also available for those plants at the time of application. Bone meal is an excellent source of phosphorus and it's derived from finely ground bovine, poultry, or fish bone. It's an excellent source of high phosphorus and it's easier found than soft rock phosphate, plus it breaks down a lot faster. Manures are also a source for phosphorus and oftentimes free. Pink manure is one of the highest in phosphorus, but it's not always easily found. Chicken and cow manure are the next best option, but they should be composted first. By being composted first, the nutrients are readily available for the plants, and it's no longer hot and it won't burn your plants. Rabbit manure also contains a lightweight amount of phosphorus, and it can actually be applied raw without any problem of burning. Manures will vary in phosphorus content as well as other nutrients. This will all depend on what the animal is being fed. Know where your manure comes from. The higher the nutrients that are fed to the animal, the higher the nutrients the manure will be in the long run. Some weeds or herbs, however you want to look at it, can provide a good source of phosphorus, plus they're free. Hang on a minute and I'll go over the best weeds for phosphorus. You can put your weeds in a bag, like a tea bag, and they can be fresh or dried, just like you would a tea for yourself. You could also use a couple of buckets, one having some holes drilled in the bottom and smerged into the other bucket with some water. You'll want this to soak for at least 24 to 48 hours. 
Of course, the longer it steeps, the stronger it's going to be, and the warmer the temperature, it's going to be stronger. So you can see during the winter months, it may not be the best time to be making weed tea. Once your tea has steeped for that 24 to 48 hours and has a nice tea color, then you can lift your bag or your bucket and you can even strain it off if you want to be spraying it on as a foliar spray. Some of the best weeds that contain phosphorus are chamomile, clover, yarrow, fennel, chickweed, bindweed, dandelion, and dock being the highest of them all. When adding a bigger variety of different types of herbs and weeds to make your weed tea, then you're just adding more nutrients, and that's a real big added benefit. How much phosphorus you apply to your garden will all depend on what you're using. Always read the product label first, and don't overuse it. It's better to underuse than to overuse and harm your soil. Too much of any fertilizer, organic or not, can slow or harm the microbial life. More is not better. If a package doesn't tell you application rates, then a good rule of thumb is to use five pounds per hundred square feet and generally is pretty safe. When you're using soft rock phosphate or bone meal, you want to have good contact underneath the soil in order for it to break down well. Sprinkling it over the surface just won't do. You can use a spade, a digging fork, or a cultivating rake to work it into that soil so the microbes can do their work, break it down, and make it readily available for the plants to follow. Phosphorus is one of those nutrients that doesn't work its way down into the soil very well. So it's best if you can get it down into where the roots are going to be. If you're doing a no-till method, then you can sprinkle your phosphorus over the surface and then put a nice thick layer of compost over the top, and that should do it. When you're using compost that you added phosphorus to it, there again, you want it down into that root level that the plants are gonna grow. So you may have to work it in, or you can just apply a really thick application of compost. Composted manures are gonna be treated basically the same way as your regular compost. Composted manures are just a little bit higher in nutrients, but in the long run, they're gonna be used the same way. One thing that we really wanna remember here is when we're making our composted manure, that we fully compost it before we use it in our garden beds. Because if we use it and it's not fully composted, it's gonna be hot, it's gonna burn. Seeds won't germinate well, and that's just not worth it. Fully compost your manure until it doesn't look or smell anything like it did originally. When making my phosphorus weed tea, I never have diluted it. I've never made it strong enough to where it's created a burn when I'm using it as a soil drench. I just simply pour it around the base of the plants and they're able to uptake those nutrients through the root system. When using your phosphorus weed tea as a foliar spray, I like to dilute it by 50%. Now there isn't any mathematical equation on exactly how much you should dilute it. I like to just use a weak tea solution. This way it goes a lot farther. Compost tea and manure tea are stronger than your weed tea, so don't confuse the two. You definitely have to dilute your compost and your manure teas a lot more. Now here's the big question. How do you know when you need to add phosphorus to your soil or when it's low? Of course, the best way is to get a reliable soil test done. And this can be done by a lot of your local nurseries or even your extension services. Plants can also show symptoms and signs, but this is a little bit hard to tell unless you're paying attention to your plants on a regular basis. One of the signs is slow growth. Now that's really hard to tell unless you're an experienced gardener and you know how fast things should be growing. Slower growth also makes the plant where it's not as nutritious and the flavor isn't as good. One of the easiest signs or symptoms to recognize is when your plant's leaves and stems start to go bluish, purplish, or even have a reddish hue to them. But you gotta be careful here because a lot of your heirloom plants, like tomato plants and broccoli plants, their fruits are purple and their plants naturally have that bluish or purplish hue to them. Another symptom that your plants may show is the lower leaves or older leaves will start to go yellow and they'll drop. Understanding phosphorus and how it works will help you be a better gardener. Put the P and your NPK into your soil, and I'll see you next time.